I was recently sent this little tract by a friend of the ministry over in the UK. This is called The Triune God of the Bible Lives. Uh, yes, he certainly does. The, uh, the, the trinity in Scripture is Satan, the, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet in the book of Revelation. But it's by Simon Turpin, and it is put out by Answers in Genesis. Okay? Um, a very wicked organization. I wouldn't give a penny to them. Uh, say a whole lot on that, but um, you see here it says also that uh, the scripture used is the English Standard Version. Love the fact that it's printed in China. That just kind of adds to it, printed in Communist China. Quality. <laughs> you can't find anybody in America or the UK to print it, so you would just send it to the Communists and they can print it for us, like a lot of the new versions do. But uh, the brother that sent it to me highlighted a couple of things. I read the whole thing, and he highlighted most of the good stuff that we're going to focus on that. But uh, it says here, um, page two of this little tract thing, the Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church that it was by the work of the triune God that, quote, you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Okay? Told the Corinthian church. Right there you can see it. Up here. Right? Um, but if you actually look it up in the King James Bible, or even in the extremely stupid version that this tract uses, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Surprisingly not that different than the ESV. Of course, there's ESV has all kinds of other errors in it. And it goes traces back to the Catholic Church. But the point is, where is there anything about the triune God in the ESV quoted here or the King James Version, God's perfect, pure, holy word over here? Um, where does it say anything about the triune God? See, if I say, so-and-so told me something, and this is what they told me, I'm supposed to quote that individual verbatim, okay? The Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church about the triune God. Quotes a verse of Scripture doesn't say anything about triune God or even hint at it. One God in three persons, not in the text. You say, well, they wouldn't just blatantly lie like that, would they? No, never. But uh, I'm going to show you the scary thing about this. Well, let's continue here. I'll show you the scary thing at the end. The doctrine of the Trinity is foundational to understanding creation, salvation, worship, baptism, and apologetics. Uh, really? Then why isn't it in the Bible? The doctrine of the Trinity... Uh, I mean, okay, just understanding creation... In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, uh, where does the Trinity fit into that? You have to believe in the Trinity to understand that God created the heaven and the earth. No, you don't. No, you don't. Um, salvation. How do you have to have a belief in the Trinity? Jesus died on the cross. Shed his blood. He was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. You have to believe in the Trinity there? No, you don't. Worship. You have to worship the Trinity? Well, if you're a Catholic, um, baptism, you get that little Catholic thing in there, you know, name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, even though in the book of Acts they actually were baptizing in the name of Jesus. You say, well, then you're for Jesus only baptism? Uh, no, I'm for both, actually. You can baptize in the name of Jesus, or you can quote the scripture and say, baptizing you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Both are correct. Okay, but you don't have to say Father, Son, Holy Ghost for it to be legitimate or something because they baptize in the, name, in the name of Jesus in the book of Acts. And apologetics, which apologetics is just garbage. Don't waste your time on it. Um, the word Bible is not even in the Bible. And he has Biblios, you know, there, which is, yep. And here they quote a little reference here down there. Oh, and by the way, there's the other quote right there. And he says, see back, which we'll see here who they're quoting with this thing here. But page six says, 
Christians do not believe Jesus is the Father. Uh, Born-again Christians do. If you're saved, you believe that Jesus is the Father. And he has Isaiah 9, 6. And it's so funny. It's so classic. The Trinitarians will say, well, yes, Jesus is called, you know, unto us a child is born, a son is given, and his name shall be the everlasting Father. And they'll say, well, that's the, f Jesus is the Father of Israel, and then God the Father is the Father of, you know, whatever. Uh, so you have two fathers, but the Bible teaches there's only one Father. They get themselves in a mess, don't they? Or they'll say, well, he's, called the everlasting father but he's not the everlasting father another nice little philosophical thing there he's it just it, the text doesn't say he is the everlasting father it just says he's called the everlasting father <laughs> okay why if he's not the everlasting father why is he called the everlasting father trinitarians are so mixed up but on uh, page 14, while the Father is at the forefront in the work of creation, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, the work of, of Son and Spirit are also recognized. I thought the Bible teaches that by Jesus Christ, by Him all things are created. You know, but again, you see how they put down Jesus? You know, that's why the Trinitarians get so, so angry when you say Jesus is the Father. No, He's not. Jesus is not the Father. Because you see, in the real Trinity thing, the real Trinity issue is a hatred for Jesus Christ. That's what's really going on there. Page 17. The breath of God gives life to Adam's body and he becomes a living what? In the book of Genesis. God breathes into his nostrils the breath of life and, and he became a living soul. No, actually not. Because the ESV says being Huh. It's kind of funny because they, they actually remove the place there in chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, answers in Genesis. They remove the fact that man is created in the image of God, and that image is a body. He's formed of the dust of the ground, breathes into his nostrils the breath of life, spirit, and man becomes a living soul. Body, soul, spirit. Body, spirit, soul. Say it that way. Let's make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 2. Dust of the ground. Breathes into his nostrils the breath of life. Man becomes a living soul. And they say, a living being. They quote a satanic version from the Vatican that changes soul to being. Hmm. How about that? Page 21. Christian worship is defined and enabled by the triune God. Okay. <laughs> if we knowingly reject, here's where it starts to get a little scary now. If we knowingly reject the doctrine of the Trinity, we cannot worship the one true God in spirit and truth. Hey, Trinitarians. Are you looking? Can you read? No Trinity, no Jesus. On the back. I reject the Trinity. It is a satanic doctrine. Well, you can't worship God then, because you reject the Trinity, so you can't worship God. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Page 22, the Trinitarian formula for the baptism of future believers. Um, by the way, if uh, you don't understand that issue, the Catholic Church only recognizes... Uh, separated brethren if they follow the trinitarian formula in baptism so if you say well we baptize in the name of jesus no sorry you're a heretic you're a heretical sect now you're not just a separated protestant brother say hmm but here's where it gets interesting okay this is the point of this video the scariness of this little Trinitarian tract here. Page 26. The reason Christians believe in the doctrine of the Trinity is that we are forced to come to this conclusion by the clear teaching of Scripture. 
Uh, the clear teaching of Scripture does not teach anything at all about a trinity. God the Father is Scripture. God the Son, God the Spirit, there's no Scripture saying that. At least in the King James Bible. Lord only knows what these pagan satanic ones like the ESV, NIV, NASV, whatever. You know, they might say anything. I have no idea. But the fact is, Trinity is not in the Bible. But they're saying we are forced. Hmm. Get back to that in a minute. Understanding the Trinity is fundamental in defending the truth of the Christian faith and in our right uh, worship of God. What does the Bible say is going to happen in the future? The whole world is going to worship the beast and the dragon. And that the beast and the dragon and the false prophet, three, they each have a spirit that comes out of their mouth. Hmm. You've seen my video on the satanic trinity. The satanic trinity, there is a trinity. Okay. You look back through ancient cultures, they're worshiping trinity type gods. It isn't some kind of a thing, well, it's in, in the Bible alone, nobody else. Oh, no, 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 no. They're worshiping trinities all throughout history, the pagans. And they still worship Trinity, the pagan people, in other words, the Catholics. And, you know, non-Catholic pagans as well. They also worship the Trinity. But notice that wording. We are forced to be Trinitarian. High-level Freemasons have to be Trinitarians in order to achieve their different ranks. Proven. I've shown the, the video, shown the proof. Um, to In order to be a... Uh, you know, Catholic and some of these other sects, you have to believe in the Trinity. What if in the future, part of the thing of believers having their heads cut off is because they reject the Trinity? Hmm. Will you worship the Holy Trinity? It's over here in Jerusalem, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. There you have Father, Son, Holy Spirit. How about that? False prophet, beast, dragon. Three separate persons, but they're all the same God. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a brother, Brother Jacob Thompson, and he's doing a lot of research on this whole Trinity thing. And he said that this, is a, this same thing occurs over and over and over again in these Trinity books. These books that defend the Trinity. We are forced to believe it. We have no choice. We are forced. And you read the Catholic Catechism, they are actually saying that the Trinity doctrine is the very core doctrine of the Christian faith. And there are people that are just foaming at the mouth, calling me heretic and everything else because I don't believe in the Trinity. You know, they want to kill me. They want to kill you if you reject this Trinity stuff. And what, what's that symbol there on the front? A three-pointed star? A trochaetra? Like the witches use? Hmm. I thought the Bible says we're not supposed to have any graven images of the Godhead. And yet they do. Hmm. And uh, what is that? Three sixes intertwined. What's the mark of the beast again? Uh, that would be three sixes. And there's a mark that's taken upon the forehead. Know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? Are you a Trinitarian? Will you take the mark? You're forced to. If you're a Christian, you're forced to believe in the Trinity. You see what's going on? This whole system here is satanic. It's not in the scriptures. And there's a future fulfillment to this whole thing. You want to worship God? The whole world worships the beast? You want to take his mark of allegiance upon the forehead? Because it is going to be physical upon, Revelation 20 talks about that, but it's also going to be an implanted microchip, I believe. It says Revelation 13, it's in the right hand or in the forehead. What a nightmare system. And it all revolves around the Trinity. So my advice, if you're supporting Answers in Genesis, don't give them another cent of your money. And uh, let's, let's call evil what it is. Answers in Genesis is an evil organization, completely satanic. Oh, they say a lot of good stuff. Yeah, uh, sure. Catholics do too, on the surface, to really understand what they are and what they're teaching. Um, 
Let's flee from these ministries, these ministries. Let's mark them, which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Avoid this trash.